So just looking at him, I've already got a list of possibilities in my mind, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. And the top one, until proven otherwise, is chlamydiosis, uh, which is um, associated with an infection of an organism very like the venereal chlamydia of people, but different from it. So you can rest easy on that one, <laughs> <laughs> but not totally easy because if he does have um, chlamydia, it the organism can sometimes infect us, and it usually does so in the, the throat, the respiratory tract, the eyes, the nose, the lungs. And in that case, the disease, the doctors usually refer to that disease as psittacosis, starting with a P S I double T A C O S I S. So that's one of the things that he might have. And tell me about what you've been doing. You told me on the phone that you got him on an antibiotic and he yeah. improved a bit? Yeah, he just um, it's just a powder form and you just put a tiny little bit, we worked out the proportions in his water Yeah. Um, and we've been changing it daily and right. the squeaking stopped right. for a while so we stopped it and then um, as soon as we stopped stopped it he started doing it again. Right. But it's from a pet shop. Yeah. yeah, well I can tell you that um, this antibiotic used to be my favourite antibiotic, one of my, or my favourite antibiotic for treating chlamydia about 25 years ago, between 25 and 30 years ago, maybe 35 <laughs> years ago, this was the antibiotic of choice. It contains, I won't show the brand name, but it contains oxytetracycline. Uh, and then um, oxytetracycline was replaced by chlortetracycline as the next best um, improvement on this antibiotic. And then doxycycline followed that. And if he does have chlamydia, then I will be suggesting we use doxycycline over this one, because it's more efficacious. Um, the other things that I'm um, just are wondering whether you were told anything uh, else to do when you're given this in the, to give this in the drinking water by no, the pet shop. No. Um, did you give any, told any thing about shell grit or cuttle, bone, cuttle uh, fish yeah, or anything? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, someone mentioned that. He used to have one, but we've just, um, he just wore it out. Right, so we, okay. And we haven't replaced it. Yeah. So, and we got it off the beach and washed right, it. Right, fine, good, okay, okay right. Things. Because when we're using this class of antibiotics, we normally stop using shell grit. Oh, okay. And we normally stop using cuttle bone. Oh, okay. And we normally stop ringing, uh, using, providing a mineral block okay. for the duration of period, uh, for the duration of treatment. Yeah. And we would certainly stop uh, using a, a sandpaper sleeve for yeah. other reasons as well. Yeah. And we normally stop giving greens. Okay. So if he's on this class of antibiotics, we stop all those things. Yeah. And the other thing that we do is we keep the treatment going non-stop yeah fresh daily for at least 30 days and up to 45 days, mm -hmm. right, without a break. Yep. If we break the treatment and it, if it is chlamydia, mm -hmm. then we have to start the treatment all over again. Yeah. All right? So, anyway, um, what I would like to do in a moment is physically examine him um, and I'll just see how he takes <laughs> handling. Um, he's um, doing a lot of preening at the moment, which is great. You know, do more preening after being handled. <laughs> I'll check. Um, I'll have a listen to his chest and lungs and um, do a little inspection. Put him back in the cage, see how quickly it takes him to get his breath. But what I would like to do a little bit further down the track is pass a tube down his throat, get a, a, um, a smear from down in his crop and a smear of the outside of the tube and check for something else that can also cause respiratory symptoms like we're seeing. Um, and that is checking for trichomonosis or, or early stages of canker. Mm -hmm. A completely different organism um, and similar to the venereal one, trichomonosis, but um, um, completely different organism again. Only this one affects this part of the throat particularly. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Gentle, gentle. Gentle, gentle. So we've got the voice squeaking and we've got the respiratory squeaking going on at the certain stage. So I'll just bring him up to the camera so we can hear that. The noise.
noise you're hearing now is respiratory. Uh, that's uh, and then there's also the complaint noise when he starts talking back to me and saying, "I," oh, but he shouldn't be making that noise that he's making at the moment with each breath. A bird's voice box is not where you think it is, or where most people think of it. A bird's voice box is not up here; it's down near the heart, right? So it's where the windpipe branches into the bronchi, uh, and we call it the syrinx rather than the larynx. Anyway, but when I hear constant squeaking, I know that there's something going on down in the chest area, not just in the throat. Area. And that makes it more likely to be uh, chlamydia. But we can also get that from enlarged thyroid glands pressing on the, that area of the body. So, goiter. <laughs> Not quite me. Not quite me. Not quite me. Little monkey. <laughs> Very hard to hear much about the respiratory sweat. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. His abdomen is concave. All right, all right, all right. Talk, talk to me. Okay, good one. His liver is still tucked up in under the breastbone. It's not not sticking out beyond the breastbone. That's good. That's a good baby. I'm just going to have a look here for further lights and a few things. Oh, there's a fresh copy. <laughs> Another baby in my shoe. Okay. I'll have a look in the moment. Anyway. Okay, no obvious creepy crawlies um, running around these feathers on the bat wing. Many budgies have feather mites when they first come, but he doesn't appear to have those. Alright, that's part good. Green glands are okay on the rump. And I think after that bit of handling, we'll just give him a rest for a few moments, see how long it takes him to catch his breath. So it's good. There you are, Bubsy. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Well, we're just going to watch him to see how long it takes him to settle down. He's just had like a, a run around the block yep. and he's not very fit. Yep. We can tell that. So um, I like to do things in a couple of, couple of stages. 